is there a difference between a plasmacytoma in the brain and CNS myeloma? CNS myeloma of the brain is very, very rare. And most of what we look at is involvement of the covering of the brain with plasma cells. They usually become thickened. And the CSF, which is the fluid covering the brain, will have plasma cells in it. And that's what really constitutes most of the CNS disease. Most of those patients will present with headache, blurred vision. Uh, some of them present with nerve palsy, meaning paralysis of the, some of the nerves in the brain or paralysis in the legs or what's called coda equina syndrome, which affects the lower part of the spinal cord. And those patients usually uh, have significant indication to actually look for CNS myeloma. We do not routinely look for CNS myeloma like some other diseases like lymphoma and leukemia. They routinely put needles around the brain to see if there is malignant cells there or not. In myeloma, we do not do that. Some studies suggest that patients with plasma cell leukemia, which is a very aggressive form of myeloma, will benefit from screening or routine evaluation of the CSF, but we have not adopted that approach in our center, and I don't think a lot of centers do that. What does CSF stand for? Cerebrospinal fluid, which is a fluid that protects the brain, and that's also part of the normal uh, covering of the brain uh, to make sure that the brain and the spinal cord are, are intact. If a patient is diagnosed with CNS myeloma, how is it treated? So, unfortunately, the outcome for CNS myeloma patients is not great. Survival actually is counted in months and the treatment has not been very effective. The best treatment we have uh, can be divided into three parts. The first one is called craniospinal radiation. Will we do radiation to the brain and to the spine to try to clear as many plasma cells as we can? And this has been shown to be effective in, in, in good number of patients. The second part is delivering the chemotherapy directly into the brain. Uh, coverings, which is called the CSF. It's called intrathecal chemotherapy. This usually is given almost every other day until we clear the CSF from the malignant cells, and then we give them prophylactic doses every week and every month after that. The intrathecal chemotherapy goal of it is to overcome what's called blood-brain barrier. The brain is protected from the different toxins in the blood by the blood-brain barrier, and the same barrier can actually and prevent some of the systemic treatments from crossing to the blood, uh, to the brain, to kill those plasma cells. And that's what is the benefit of giving the chemotherapy directly into the CSF. What intrathecal chemotherapy is used? It's actually different types of chemotherapy. We do not usually use them in multiple myeloma. One is called methotrexate, RSC, and prednisone. That's the three drugs we use in our center. There are other chemotherapies that can be given intrathecally, but this is this triple intrathecal chemotherapy is more or less standard for any malignant or hematologic malignancy that affects the CNS, uh, whether it's lymphoma, leukemia, or myeloma. And as I said, we give it more frequent in the first few weeks until we clear the CSF, uh, the cerebrospinal fluid from the plasma cells, and then we give it once some, a week and then once a month after that. Has any systemic myeloma therapy been used to treat CNS myeloma? The systemic treatment that has been tried has not been very successful. That said, there are some studies to suggest that the imids like revlimid and pomalidomide can cross the blood-brain barrier, but I think the concentrations are usually very low and they do not kill enough myeloma cells, so they're, by themselves they are not very effective. There are some case reports. We actually did one of those studies looking at what's called third-generation proteasome inhibitors. Not the bortezomib or Velcade or carfilzomib or kyprolas, but there is a new one called mirazomab. Mirazomab is a new proteasome inhibitor that appears to have lipophilic property, meaning it likes to bind to the lipids, and it actually has property to cross the blood-brain barrier. So it has been tried in some brain tumors with some success. And we did have a trial in our center with Paul Richardson, actually from Dana-Farber, looking at combination of mirazimab with pomalidomide. And we have used this drug in few cases with CNS myeloma in our center, and we have been able to clear the CSF. So there is a new interest in finding those systemic agents that can cross the blood-brain barrier. But in general, the 
outcome is not great, and this is an area of great need or unmet need uh, in myeloma.